Welcome to Overland Expo 2020 West, the virtual edition. I'm Graham Jackson from 7P Overland. This is Nick Taylor. Hi, guys. And we are here to give you a little bit of a on-the-couch look at what we use gear-wise at Overland Expo. Well, let's get into that. Shall we start looking at the gear? So let's do that. What I've got here is a, a beautiful Botswana made canvas bag. And we find these great for our kinetic gear. So we break down equipment into different, different kinds of gear. We keep our winching equipment, which is, of course, very static, and our more kinetic, more dynamic recovery gear separate because, generally speaking, you use those in very different types of recoveries. So in our kinetic recovery kit, we have I did mention this was from Africa, but it's not a snake. It's a nice, long kinetic recovery rope. And also in the kit, just for contrast purposes, really, we have the kinetic straps, also known as snatch straps. Although that's a term that's a little bit overused. That, that term's, I'd, I'd be a bit careful with that term because they're things that we have called snatch blocks, or people call them snatch blocks, snatch straps. Snatch gets, yeah, these are kinetic. Kinetic rope, kinetic strap. Any strap that people pick up, you know, from the back of their truck tends to be a snatch strap when in fact it isn't. And in just a minute, we'll get into the differences of, of, of why these kinetic straps um, have different characteristics from the static equipment. We have more stuff in the bag. What's in there, Nick? Well, aha. Oh, what is that? There's a soft shackle in there, which we'll come on to in a moment as well. And as you can see, there's a bag of heavy, heavy stuff heavy in the here and there. You know, so the traditional bow shackles are in there too, and another soft shackle, and uh, ah, another piece of equipment for for you know the the the, the maybe the less equipped vehicles, the less built-up vehicles, um, and this is a, a receiver hitch um, recovery point. And to be clear, this is a, one of our training kits. So if you were going to buy a um, dynamic recovery kit from us, it would come with some of this gear in it, but not all of the gear. So you'd either, either get a rope or a strap, and then depending on what vehicle you had, you'd get different, uh, different combinations of the shackles that we have. You know, you can customize our kits to, to, to whatever you need to do, but as I say, this is really just focusing on the dynamic uh, type of recoveries. And the most important parts, of course, are these, the strap and the rope here. Now, kinetic gear, um, unlike the static gear, is made from stuff, as you would expect, that stretches. Obviously, I can't do it here, believe it or not, I can't pull that apart in a stretchy way that you would with a vehicle. But the, the rope um, is, is woven a particular way, it's made from nylon. Um, the strap um, is also made from nylon. And really the pros and cons are um, the ropes stretch more. They stretch to about 30% of their original length. The straps stretch to about 20%. Um, but as you can see, the straps are a little bit more convenient. You know, they pack up better. Um, they take up less room. So if you've got a smaller vehicle, that's an important consideration. But they both ultimately do the job. What about the uh, how do we attach those things to the vehicle? Well, you know, as, as, time, as, as things have changed over the past few years, we've moved away from the steel wire rope. The, the heavy metal objects, all of these, um, uh, you know, big and heavy and, and somewhat dangerous, less forgiving, let's call it that, pieces of equipment into these, into these systems. And what we like to do as much as possible is moving away from the, the hard metal stuff to the much softer, the much more forgiving, um, you know, synthetic materials like these, um, these soft shackles here, which are made from the same, uh, the same material as your winch line would be. Of course, that doesn't stretch. So to be clear, when you mean forgiving, it's forgiving in the, the sense that if this this is, if this hits you on the head, it's a lot more forgiving, but it's not more forgiving in the sense that it's less strong, because actually these soft shackles can be much stronger than the bow shackles that, they, that we actually use them to replace. But assuming you've got a good, a nice good recovery point on your vehicle, you know, a soft shackle will work, you've got to think about the turn radius, you've got to think about sharp edges. If you can't find anything that's suitable for the soft shackle, then of course we'd revert back to the bow shackle, which, which again, will we'll go through, typically go through welded in points on bumpers and, and things like that. Or even that receiver hitch, well, which is actually what it's specifically hitch, designed which for, is right? Absolutely, Graham, yeah. And that's why we have both of those in the kit. You never know. Oftentimes, you'll be out with your own recovery kit, and the person you need to recover is not yourself. It's somebody else. So we do have the option to have a few, few attachment points in the kit so that you can attach to somebody else's vehicle who, you know, they, they may have some sharp edges, they may have a, a, a bull bar made by somebody, and, you know, it, it just ha happens to be not suitable for a, a soft shackle. So that's, that's always possible. We like the rope, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it, this will stretch 
more than a strap. This will stretch to about 30 percent. Uh, and there are a few, there are definitely uh, a few good ones on the market. And the important thing um, about these ropes really is that you can see they're quite thick. Um, what we like to do is match them with the with the weight of the vehicle. You know, so you know if, if you're in a if you're in you know a, a standard size four by four, which might be four to six thousand um, pounds, it's not the same as driving one of those big six by six Russian Kamaz trucks. You know, um, much heavier, of course. So matching the equipment to the size of the vehicle is important as well. This one here is a, is, is sort of the standard four by four. It, it's rated to uh, to twenty eight thousand pounds, more or less. Um, and as as we will talk a little bit more. Uh, later, we, we always like to see properly rated equipment that's fit for purpose. So that means it's made by a, a good manufacturer, it's got a good sort of auditable supply chain, you know what you're getting is good quality gear, and that you've matched it to the, the vehicle that's likely to be recovered. Although as Graham touched on a bit, obviously it's not your vehicle that's getting stuck, it's usually pulling somebody else out of the mess. Always, always, always. So it's a good point you bring up about the, about the ratings, and that's important for everything in the kit, right? So it's not just the strap or the rope that's rated to your vehicle. It's also the soft shackles, the bow shackles, and even uh, the receiver hitch attachment point. That one's from Factor 55. They do really nice ones that are rated pretty well. But to that point, the weakest part of that entire system is probably the receiver that you're putting that receiver attachment point into. So you've got to be aware of all of these different things when you're doing dynamic recoveries and when you are recovering anything in any situation really. It's definitely worth knowing and understanding how these things are actually attached to the vehicle and as Graham said it's really important from a safety perspective. We manufacture our own ropes and also we use the ones from Masterpool, very reputable companies. The straps, that's an ARB strap. ARB makes some really good gear. Um, used to be that they didn't label it quite well enough, but now they actually do label them with, with uh, the correct labeling. And then we make our own soft shackles, and they are all rated and, and fit for purpose. We use various bow shackles that, you know, you can buy really cheap stuff from Amazon or eBay or, uh, but what, what we like to do is we, we source them from a, from a, um, a few companies, uh, Gnebo, uh, a great, we use the, the, the Van Beast, which are from Holland, uh, Gnebo and Van Beast both sort of made their name in the, in the North Sea oil industry. Um, on the, on the, you know, the American made side, we really like the CM, they're, they're a great color because we find when we're doing recoveries, it's at night, it's raining, you're hungry, you're miserable. So having orange stuff that you can find because I've lost one or two of these in my career, I'm sure of that. So, um, and the great thing about the CM shackles is they're made with a, with a higher grade steel. Um, so, uh, whereas these, these, the typical sort of uh, bow shackle of this size, like the Garibo here, is, uh, has a working load limit of four and three quarter tons. Um, the similar size, exactly the same size shackle uh, from, from CM is, has a working load limit of six and a half tons. So the material uh, makes a difference as well. Be sure that everything has a rating on it. And as Nick said, it comes from a reputable manufacturer. So I think we've, we've covered everything that's in the, in the kinetic kit. As you can see, it's a, it's a very convenient kit. We, we find that folks um, like these, even if they're going out by themselves, because it can be quite a quick and easy way um, of getting yourself or, of course, your friend unstuck. But as you can see, it's quite a, it's quite a, a, a small and, 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 and uh, compact kit. Um, we typically don't have both of these things. We use them for training purposes. Uh, you'll either have a rope or a strap um, with a combination of shackles and perhaps the, the, the receiver hitch recovery point if you need it but I think maybe Graham you've got a bag of goodies over there that we I have can, another that bag we of goodies about. over here and this one is actually something we are just about to bring to the market so this is the 7p basic winch recovery kit comes in a, uh, a beautiful case bag made by the guys at, at Blue, Ridge Overland, Blue Ridge Overland gear yep and we've got a couple of soft shackles just like uh, like Nick had over there one of these fancy, fancy things that I'll get into in a minute. A couple of bow shackles, a winch extension, and an endless sling. And that's basically the kit that we use for any vehicle that's got a winch on it. So this is basically your winch recovery kit as separate from your kinetic or your dynamic recovery kit, which is what Nick, Nick went through over there. The materials in this are completely different from the materials in that, for the most part, as far as the straps go. And it's for a different purpose, right? This, this stuff is all for when you are doing a recovery with 
one of these bad boys, right? So that's a, a red winch. Couple of things you need when you're doing a winch recovery. You need something to attach to. Normally, you're thinking about an anchor point, so often people think about a tree, right? Trees are oftentimes really good anchor points, but you have to be very careful with trees. I mean, we don't want to go through and rip up the environment. We don't want to kill trees when we're just trying to do a recovery, things like that. A lot of people, a lot of kits include um, a tree strap, uh, which is a big, thick strap, a lot like the, that ARB strap there, but made out of polyester instead of nylon, so it's non-stretchy. What we have moved on to is stuff from the lifting industry, and that's what this is. This is an endless sling, so it's a really big loop, and if you imagine, it's, it's actually really soft. Um, the fibers inside are very much like winch fiber, uh, like the Dyneema fibers in a winch rope, but they're not bound together. Um, and so it's very soft and it's got this nice cladding on the outside, uh, which is basically to protect uh, the, the, the internal components. But it's very soft and you can imagine you can wrap this around a tree, bring it back to itself and uh, you've got a, a nice tree anchor. Um, you can wrap it around rocks, you can wrap it around trucks, you can do all sorts of things. So these are very, very, um, I don't know, dynamic uh, pieces of equipment. <laughs> oh, but not in that sense. But not in that, that sense. So this, this sounds like a funny question. So it's an endless sling. Yes. How long is it? It's an endless sling. This is an eight foot endless <laughs> sling. <laughs> right. Amazingly so, enough. So we like, we like the eight feet leg because um, it's, it's, uh, it's, actually, it's a, little, a little taller than Graham. It's actually 16 feet. So uh, long. And, and it's, it's, it's the right kind of size. You know, you go, you, is, you could use it for, a, for an anchor point around a tree or rocks, as Graham said. You could, in a push, you could use it as a, as a tow rope. If you have two of them in a soft shackle, then we've got a 16 foot tow rope, you know, a bit of space depending on the drivers. Right. Um, the driver behind, of course, it's always their fault. Um, you know, it gives you a bit of wiggle room in case uh, they're not paying as much attention as they should. So it's a, you could use it for that type of recovery too. You can, you can pull people out as a conventional tow rope. Again, with anchor points, we've used them in, in, in more technical recoveries as well to, um, to stabilize vehicles, to use them as safeties. Um, there's, it seems like there's an infinite amount of uses for an endless sling. They're almost we really an like endless. Them. An endless number, number of uses, uses for, yeah, an, that's, that's, for, for an infinite sling. We really like them. Having, having you know, one or two in your kit is really good. And we find you know, in overlanding, because people are doing them in smaller vehicles, people are living out of vans, you know, and you haven't got much space. Um, so, so having a piece of equipment that works across uh, for multiple purposes is a really handy thing to have. Now, to get back to something we talked about over on this side, ratings, right? So as we said, everything should have a rating on it. This is seven, from our sister company, 7P Gear, and um, it's got a rating on it. Actually, the complete supply chain is, is basically put on here. It's got a manufacturing date, um, and it's also got the uh, ratings in different configurations. So if you can imagine, you can use this as a basket. So like this, you know, you could use it as, you can choke it. So if you could actually have something through yeah. there and use it as a choker, kind of like that. Or you could just use it straight as a straight pull, like, a, like, like Nick mentioned, if you can use it as a tow rope or something like that. This does not stretch. This is not a dynamic system at all. So there's almost no stretch in this. And um, it's just made for like I said, we, we like to put them around trees as a tree saver, and that's, that's sort of the, the, the generic use that we've got for it in this kit. We, re we really do, we can't stress enough really the, the importance of properly rated equipment. If there's anything you, you can take away from um, these kind of, you know, what we do at the, at, the, at the expo in real life is take away the fact you need to look at, look at, the, look at the gear, look for the ratings, understand what a working load limit is, understand what, what, a, what MBS or, or you know, um, you know, the, the minimum braking strain or strength is on, on a piece of equipment, understanding what the safety factor is, um, which is the difference between those two. It's a multiplier between those two things. And um, a very important thing there, just to note, you said minimum braking strength, MBS. I'd always, 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 always keep in mind what the actual terminology is because there are things out there where uh, people use the term maximum instead of minimum. Oh dear. 
Yes. Indeed. That, Indeed. That, 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 that can good. be a trouble. You know, you want to know where, where, this, where this gear fails at and, and buying from reputable suppliers that are properly rated, you know, and things like manufacture dates, which we think are important, so you know how old your equipment is. Um, we, we, we track on things like these kinetic ropes that, that I talked about earlier. We'll, we, you know, we'll track the big recoveries and the small recoveries and then retire them after a few. Of course, you know, our use in training is different from, from, from your use, uh, overlanding or traveling wherever you travel. Um, but, you know, the, the, the manufacture date, the serial numbers are good because serial numbers can be traced back to, to when it, you know, who made it. So, so, and when someone's literally signed off on a piece of equipment, um, it gives you more confidence that that's a good piece of equipment. And y will you pay a little bit more for that? Of course you will. But actually, you know, you, 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 you're saving yourself money because otherwise you'll buy something that's rubbish and then it'll fail or let you down. And as I said earlier, you know, cold. it'll be it's cold. Wet. You'll be cold, wet, dark, <laughs> raining. You know, yeah. you'll be hungry, you'll be tired. You want your gear to, to you know, to get work. you out of the mess. It'll work with you, not against you. We've got a few other bits and pieces here. Oh, yeah. um, we already went through the, um, the bow shackles, which is what we have two different bow shackles. We had the Ganebo ones and the CM ones over there. These are the Van Beast ones that, uh, that Nick mentioned. Um, and again, these are f um, uh, four and three quarter ton working load limits. Uh, bow there, shackles. There's a reason we like the Van Beasts, actually. The, the, there the, is, the, the other yes. stuff's great, don't get me wrong. We would only use good gear, of course. Um, the Van Beasts, you know, everything's stamped. So these are the... <laughs> These are the smoothest shackle you could buy, um, which is important. Think about it. We're using these with synthetic materials. We don't want any burring. You know, we don't want any damage to occur to these right. synthetic fibers. Included uh, as well, we have two soft shackles. So you've probably all seen soft shackles, right? Um, basically, this was, uh, I think they came out of the, the yachting industry um, originally. Um, uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, basically, if you have one of these on a yacht or on a ship and it goes overboard, well, it's never coming back, right? This stuff is much lighter and it floats. And in fact, pound for pound, obviously, it's a lot stronger than steel. Um, there are lots of different soft shackles out there on the market. Um, again, as Nick said, always buy rated gear. So it doesn't matter who you get it from, as long as it's rated and it comes from a reputable manufacturer, doesn't really matter who made it. In the manufacturing of these, obviously, there are a couple of things. There's the rope itself, and then there's the splicing to actually make it a piece of rope into a soft shackle, as you see here. So there are different knots that people use. The knot, the, the knot is lovely, and of course, uh, my favorite shirts all have these. They're a little bit smaller than this, of course. But the, no, they don't. the, way, the, way, to, the way to tell, um, you know, the way, the way to look at the quality of a shackle, one indicator anyway, um, as Graham said, obviously the ratings will go on and on about the ratings. Um, but but where, where are the ends? You know, often people will cut the rope here, and then they'll, they'll apply heat to it so, so, it's, uh, so it's rounded off and not in there. As you can see with the way that we like our shackles to be, is there is no sign of an end anywhere on the shackle. It's very smooth. The, 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 the tails are tucked nicely back down into the shackle. Um, and we think they are, you know, the, 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 well, obviously we think they're, they're really the good because they're ours. Yeah. Um, but, but seriously, look, look, at, look at the manufacturers of others. There's a, there's a reason that um, good soft shackles are a bit more expensive. But look at the knots, look at, look at where the tails are, look if any heat's been applied, look at where, you know, the cuts have been made, and that will help you choose a good soft shackle because, of course, there, there are many available. They've become very common in the past few years. As Graham mentioned, you know, they did come out of the maritime industry. Uh, and not only do they, do they float and you can get them when you go away, Ima imagine having, you know, 600 of these on a boat versus 600 of these. I've no idea. I've no, I, I do come from a coastal town, but I've no idea how many. But the point is, on a, on a fishing boat, um, you know, moving, moving away from the heavy materials to the lighter materials made, meant that they could carry more payload, which made them money. So that's where it came from. And also, that's something you wanted to think about in an overland vehicle, right? We, they, they, they call it overloaded for a reason. Um, a lot of people put too much stuff in their vehicles. And obviously, if you've got a bunch of these versus a bunch of these, you're just gaining, you're gaining extra payload. You probably shouldn't. You're, you're actually probably getting closer to GVW, but that's a whole different story. Looking at ratings, so uh, this has an MBS of 48,000 odd pounds, which is massive, right? That is, that is a very, very strong shackle, just, and that's just as to a that shackle. In, to help you visualize that, actually, so, so 48,000 pounds is 10 times the weight of this truck behind us. Yeah. So this one shackle, 
you know, without any safety measures inclu you know, included. But technically, you know, one of these shackles could lift 10 of these, 10 of these vehicles. 10 defender night. Which shows you how amazing this material is. They only have one loop at this end to go over the, over the button. So one eye to go over the button so you can't get it wrong. And um, there's, your, there's your soft shackle. This is something that uh, we introduced to the Overland market what, four years ago, I think? Yeah, three or four years ago. Um, yeah, three or four years ago. It's, and we called it the recovery ring. We didn't invent the technology itself, um, but we brought it to the recreational market as it is. So th these have been used on ships as, as well. Um, so they are very well established in industry. Um, and what it is, is a replacement for a, remember what we said earlier, snatch block actually a pulley block. But if you imagine what it is, it's just a pulley block to run your winch rope around. Does a couple of things for you. It will um, redirect a pull, right? So you can offset your pull. You can uh, actually pull to, a, to an object in a, a, not in a straight line location, or you can double the pulling power of your winch. And that's a whole esoteric subject that we can go into as well at a different point, but this is the piece of kit you use for it. The nice thing about this is there are no moving parts, right? It's just a ring. The other part of that is the soft shackle. So you actually put the soft shackle through here, attach that like that, rig it correctly, and oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many videos on YouTube there are where people rig these like this, like this. This is how you rig it. There's only one way to rig it. And, and this is how it is. And then your winch rope runs through the pulley. This is at an attachment point. And then the, you know, the ring turns as the, as, as the winch spools, spools in. So basically, it's like it's just like a pulley. Lovely piece of kit. Yeah, we, we I mean, we like them, you know, we're, we're obviously. Um, but again, it's one of those things. It's very compact. You know, this is this is this 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 small ring here um, has an MBS of thirty six thousand pounds. So that you know, the large one which we use on the on the full size trucks is eighty thousand pounds, but still quite small and complex, com compact. And when you and when you couple them with a soft shackle, and again. Remember what we said, having a piece of gear that does multiple things is really important. A soft shackle, again, has a, has a bunch of uses. So again, we, we, we match them, uh, you know, the 80,000 um, pound recovery ring there with, the, with this shackle here, let me make sure it's right. Uh, this is an 86,000 pound soft shackle. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than the 40 some thousand pound one Graham was using. Um, matching those, again, but, but think about this for, for a big truck. You know, it's, it's quite small, compact, and you can use the shackle for multiple things. Awesome piece of kit, and that's why it's in the winch recovery bag. And then finally, um, for, for, this, for this kit, we have a winch extension rope, because you will always find not only is it cold, dark, you're hungry, you're tired when you get stuck, but when you run your winch line out, it's always three and a half feet short from the anchor point you need to get to. It's so, some kind of law of the universe, it's I think, that, the isn't universe. it? It's, it it's is, never yes. quite long enough. So basically what an extension, uh, a winch extension rope is, is just an, you know, it's just exactly like winch rope. So this is going to be uh, Dyneema and um, it's basically got, got an eye on each end. We've got a soft eye on one end and a, and a hard eye on the other. And then also, as we've been harping on and you have heard several times in this class already, it's got a rating sheet on it basically so it's going to tell you what it's rated to where it was made and some other safety stuff like um, temperature limits and things like that so uh, uh, very very important and this is a uh, 40 foot extension actually on there so awesome piece of kit to have with your winch we use these kits uh, extensively at Overland Expo in our training classes. We run the training program at Overland Expo, so if you have an experience package pass, we're the ones out there doing the training for vehicle recovery, driver training. Well guys, thanks for joining us here today at the 7P HQ. We've enjoyed having you. We hope and you've picked up a couple of tidbits of knowledge, particularly around the safety aspects, the ratings, and making sure that your equipment is fit for purpose. And don't forget to check us out on the web. We're at uh, 7poverland.com. Check out our social media channels. Thanks very Cheers. much for joining us. Cheers, Slangivar. Guys.